What's up guys, Shane Starnes here with Droid Modder X, and before you go flaming me in the comments, just know that this is not my full review of the iPhone XS Max. In fact, I think that the phone has a lot going for it. However, there are tons of issues that have been well documented that have plagued the iPhone XS and XS Max since the launch of the device. Is this enough to call the iPhone XS and XS Max the most garbage iPhone that ever existed? We're about to find out. Let's go ahead and get started. So one of the most annoying issues about the iPhone XS Max that I noticed from the moment that I started using it is the display. I've had issues with blue tint shift on the display. So if you're looking dead on at the device, colors look great, albeit maybe a little warmer than I would like. When you shift it off axis just a little bit, you're going to notice a blue shift. And then when you're looking straight at the phone again, it goes back to normal colors. And that can be rather annoying. I did notice that the more and more I used the phone as days went by, I noticed the blue shift less and less. It's still there, but it's something that I personally was able to get used to. And it ends up not being that big of an issue. It's certainly not as big of an issue as the blue shift that was plaguing the Pixel 2 XL. Aside from the blue tint when looking at different viewing angles, the other issue that I noticed with the display is the fact that it lags just a little bit. When I'm scrolling through Twitter is a perfect example and I've got a white background with black text, it kind of gives it a grid appearance where the display is just lagging maybe a millisecond, where the pixels are shifting from one block to the next. That little bit of lag kind of makes it look like there is a grid behind the display. This is another thing that I was able to get used to over time. It was just jarring coming from the Galaxy Note 9 and going to the iPhone XS Max. The next huge thing that I've been having an issue with was covered extensively on Matthew Monis's channel, and I'm going to link to that in the description below. Uh, but it is a poor Wi-Fi and LTE reception issue that I've noticed. Basically everywhere that I go in my town that I have had great reception uh, using the AT&T network with other phones, I'm finding it very difficult to get full bars of reception with LTE. I'm also noticing at different places in my house where all the phones that I've used in the past have had no Wi-Fi connectivity issues. I'm having Wi-Fi connectivity issues with the iPhone XS Max to the point where the phone is in some places of my house, it's now unusable. Now it's not just a reception issue or a signal strength issue, it's also a speed issue. So even if you have a full connection, you're going to notice slower speeds on the XS Max versus a phone like the Galaxy Note 9 or even previous iPhones. Matthew Monez actually did speed tests on various phones showing that this really is an issue. So another more annoying problem that has been noticed on the iPhone XS and XS Max is this automatic beauty mode when you're taking a selfie. When I say automatic beauty mode, the photos that are taken with the front facing camera are just not natural. They've been overprocessed. There's like a smoothing effect that happens. It's kind of like a beauty mode on a cheaper phone, maybe a cheaper Android phone that we've seen in the past. At least on those phones, that mode can be toggled on or off. It looks like on the iPhone XS and XS Max, there's no way to toggle this beauty mode off. There was a Twitter post by Roberto Blake where he shows a comparison of an older phone versus the iPhone XS Max. And his theory is that maybe this is a noise reduction technique that maybe Apple has just taken a little too far. The fact that every single photo that you're taking from the front facing camera has that overprocessed look is not really good. Hopefully Apple will give us a software update to turn that function on or off, even if it means a little extra grain, a little extra noise in our photos. Another widespread issue, which happens to be, in my opinion, the most egregious issue on a phone that some people are paying more than $1,500 for is the fact that it has charging issues. This may very well be a hardware issue. It could also be a software issue, but what's going on is when the phone is in idle mode or it's asleep, and you plug in the phone, it doesn't automatically recognize your charger and it does not go into charge mode. The problem seems to be most prevalent if you're trying to save some battery and you have turned off the lift to wake function. Uh, because the phone is not awake whenever you plug it in, it's not recognizing the charger and it's not charging. A simple fix would be to just turn on the lift to wake function and then as long as the phone is awake, you should be able to charge it. Lou from Unbox Therapy actually covered this more extensively. He's saying that it's being reported by some that it doesn't matter whether the phone is awake or not awake, that some phones are just not charging, period. If that's the case, it may not be fixable with a software update. This may be a hardware issue. Worst case scenario, Apple may have to replace some of those devices that won't take a charge at all. Another issue that is being pretty widely reported on Reddit 
is the fact that some iPhones are randomly rebooting. So people are noticing that when they're taking their phone out of their pocket, it's saying that the phone's been rebooted and face unlock is not gonna work. They're going to have to enter in their pin. Some others also caught the phone in action, just sitting idle on a desk and randomly rebooting. So it seems to not be an issue with the phone not being able to process certain applications or certain functions and giving up and rebooting. It actually is happening while the phone is just sitting idle for no apparent reason. Some people reported that they were able to go to the Apple store and exchange their phone, but then they also reported that that new exchanged phone was having the same rebooting issue. Now the hope is that all of these issues can be fixed with a simple software update. 12.1 is already in beta, and some are reporting that most of these issues are fixed. However, there are other people that are reporting that these problems still exist on their phone even when running beta 12.1. Even though I have experienced some of these issues on my own, I don't think that this is the most garbage phone that Apple has ever released. I think that this is actually one of the best iPhones that Apple has ever released. Unfortunately, when you decide to buy one of the first batches of phones, no matter how expensive the phone may be, you're kind of signing up to be a beta tester. And while Apple is working on getting the bugs and kinks worked out, there may be some issues. I'd like to know your thoughts in the comments below. Are you having any of these issues with your iPhone XS and XS Max? Are these issues enough for you to consider this the most garbage iPhone that Apple's ever made? Let me know in the comments below. That about wraps it up for this video. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel for more content. Content. Thanks again for watching. Be blessed and I'll see you in the next one.